started on this journey in 2011, I had my ACE awakening, that's what I call it, and part of that was due to St. A's, so thank you, Ann and Tim, for what you did to get me started on this journey. But there's a lot of other people in this crowd that have helped me. Um, our principal investigator is here, Lynn Sheets, from the Medical College. We came together in 2011, we took 20, uh, 12 community organizations from both sides of the aisle, it didn't care to us. If you were working with children and families, you could be part of the discussion and you could really kind of get us started. And so um, there are, um, there's Set Ministry, there's Children's Hospital, there's the Medical College of Wisconsin. We have um, the Children's Department of Mental Health, which was just, um, really came together about four years. My, Excuse me, four years ago my husband felt the need for this department for the state of Wisconsin and they are involved with us. The state government is involved with us and many county agencies. So we came together and what we decided to do is systems change. So we wanted to, to change the way that businesses, organizations, and agencies actually do business by holding them up the mirror to themselves and saying, are we trauma-informed? Because if we're not trauma-informed, we can't go out and do this type of work. So that's the journey we've been on. It's been challenging at times. I think Dr. Lovell is going to make it much easier for all of us to do this work, and thank you so much for doing this. It's exactly what we needed was this kind of wind behind our sails to push us and keep doing this work. And so we came together, we um, spent many, many years um, training county agencies, but the most important thing that we've been able to do that we feel is we've been able to change state government. So we have seven state agencies who are in a two-year process of changing the way that they do business. So when they look at policies and practices, they're thinking about trauma-informed care. So we had about a year, first year is really holding up the mirror to yourself, saying, how does our HR policies look? How does um, the way we hire people, who we hire, and what we want to see accomplished as we move forward? And so that's been a really challenging kind of practice, a pro um, kind of challenging kind of experience or awakening for state government, if you can only imagine what that might look like. But they're on this journey and they're committed to that and so that's what makes it so wonderful. We've really had the opportunity to really continue our work and take it to Washington, D.C. This year we passed, um, uh, two resolutions were passed in the Senate and in the House that say when they're looking at services for children and families that they need to recognize trauma-informed care and embed that in the work that they do. It's very important that they start to hear this language. This year we are pulling a caucus together so that when the House of Representatives are thinking about what they're doing for children and families, they're thinking about trauma-informed care when they're doing this. So those are the two big things. We were able to get May as Trauma-Informed Care Month, so I hope you'll all join us on a state level when we really are able to bring awareness to this kind of um, ACEs and trauma-informed care and this kind of work that we do. But on May 22nd, they have declared um, a trauma-informed care day. And of course, I, at the beginning, I was like, that was the least of what I wanted to accomplish. But now I see that this is a day when we can really recognize the work that we're doing and really, um, uh, really recognizing all that's being done in the state of Wisconsin. So our goal at Fostering Futures is to really make trauma-informed care, uh, Wisconsin fully trauma-informed. Every, I mean, you say everyone from the bus driver, and Anne's gonna hear this because I said this in the beginning, everyone from the bus driver to the superintendent to um, anyone that works anywhere should know about trauma-informed care. So thank you, thank you uh, Dr. Lovell for what you're doing, but for what all of you are doing, it's amazing to, to, to know that we're not alone in this and that we can continue to move the needle on trauma-informed care. So thank you again. Thank you for everything you're doing, and I'm, I'm anxious to hear what's next, what's going to happen next with all of us. Thanks. <laughs>